Welcome to City Conversations, the City of Fayetteville's TV program that talks about what's important to you as our residents. You may have noticed some art projects downtown in the downtown area recently. Actually, they've been up for the last two years or so. With us today, we have Deborah Mintz, who is the Executive Director for the Arts Council. And we have Eric Lindstrom, who is the Chair of the Arts Council's Public Art Committee. So we're going to talk a little bit about those projects. But before we do that, Eric and Deborah, welcome. And uh, thank you. Deborah, if you could give us an overview of, of sure. what exactly the Arts Council does. Well, Kevin, thank you for that welcome, and thank you for inviting us to be here. I will promise you that Arts Council, and at least these two people as well, if you give us a chance to talk about the City of Fayetteville, Cumberland County, and the arts within it, we're good to go. So thank you so much. Um, the Arts Council is going to celebrate its 45th anniversary next year. So it started back in the early 1970s. It was created as an initiative from the state when they allocated funding for all 100 counties. And Cumberland County stepped up and said, we'll create an Arts Council so that we can have a responsible entity for those funds. And over 45 years, the Arts Council's done a lot of wonderful programming, um, education in our community. The mission statement of the Arts Council is, we say the Arts Council of Fayetteville, Cumberland County, um, celebrates individual creativity, cultural preservation, uh, economic development, and lifelong learning in Fayetteville, Cumberland County. So what that really means is that we help to grow and celebrate this community through cultural arts. And we use a, a broader definition of cultural arts. We're not just looking at the fine arts, which are really important, but we're looking also, we add history, heritage, science, just a broader definition there. And we have so many wonderful assets in this community for us to celebrate. Well, well, that's certainly a lot of things on your plate. And I know, just thinking of two of the things that we've worked with you recently on, which was the International Folk Festival. Uh, and then Fourth Fridays, we were just talking about a little while before the show started, about two of the things that I'm not sure people know that you do that. Yeah, no, that is interesting. It's always surprising because uh, with, in terms of arts council, sometimes people have no clue. I often will say, if, if I'm speaking to someone and I say Cape Fear Regional Theater, whether they've ever been there, they've got a really great picture of what that is. Fayetteville Symphony Orchestra, got a picture. Botanical Garden, I've got a picture. When you say arts council, sometimes people, it's just a blank, thing. what, what is that? <coughs> and, um, and, and so it's always, the, the work is so broad. It does include the International Folk Festival, which is wonderful. We've been producing the Folk Festival. Next year, we're going to have an anniversary for the Arts Council, 45 years, and next year will be the 40th anniversary of the International Folk Festival. Wow. Arts Council has been doing it since 2000. It, was, it came under other auspices before, but um, it is an example of our commitment to cultural preservation a celebration of everything that we are in this community. One of the things we often say in connection with the Folk Festival is that because of Fort Bragg and other reasons, people from all over the world live in Fayetteville Cumberland County and people who live in Fayetteville Cumberland County go to work all over the world and we are all richer for that. So Folk Festival's a favorite with us. No, that's neat. Well we really enjoyed being able to film that this past year and, and the year prior and uh, it is neat to see the diversity that, that is in this town. That's one of the things that attracted us to, to stay in here and, uh, and see in the, the rich heritage that we have. Th that's great. Um, and, and then, Eric, o over to you in terms of this Works in Progress uh, exhibit that's been going on. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we're, <coughs> we're in our second year, which is, which is great, and we've, it, it's been tremendously, I think, su successful and well-received, such that in, the, in our second year we were able to add an additional six pieces on top of the original seven that we had in our first year. And it's really grown out of an effort. We've been in a planning efforts for a public art master plan, uh, which is a larger effort. And the work in progress is really an outgrowth of that to help build awareness about you know, what a uh, public art master plan, if we have that in place, what could that bring to our community long term in terms of public art pieces, not just in our downtown area, but uh, spread across our entire uh, city and county, uh, you know, what, what that ordinance could bring to our community. And, and where did the name Works in Progress come from? What, what, <laughs> why, about, why that name? Well, literally because it is a work in progress. Um, the first exhibit was put together in a very uh, short order uh, because we realized we needed to help really share what this vision of a public, mar 
public art master plan would bring to our community. And we thought, what better way than to um, create an installation that, again, would be an example of, of, of what we might be able to expect if we actually had an, or an ordinance. So it was put together very quickly and uh, with much enthusiasm and, gr and great support from the Arts Council and also from our individual donors who helped uh, kind of co-sponsor the pieces. And it really came together in about 90 days. And we, it may evolve into something larger <coughs> or different in the future, but uh, when we started it, it was definitely a work in progress. And, in, and really until we get the, the public art master plan adopted, I, I think it is still a work in prog progress. And, and you mentioned the funding piece of that. So where, where do the <coughs> funds come from to, to get all these pieces mm -hmm. out on the streets? Well, one of the, uh, a lot of it, probably about 50% comes from private donors. Uh, the Arts Council has put up matching funds and um, uh, they've even, uh, when we've exceeded our fundraising goal, they've even helped assist us create additional sponsorships. So it's really a great working relationship between individual donors and the Arts Council. And probably about 50% of the pieces are uh, residents, some that live in the downtown area, some that are just in the city and the county that have sponsored pieces, and then the other are corporations. But essentially, um, by sponsoring a piece, you get your name on the, on the plaque, and there's a description of the piece, and it's a it's a wonderful thing uh, to bring to our community for 11 months. It sure yeah. is. It's a great gift to the community, and one of the small things that we can offer for that sponsorship is public exposure, telling the community, particularly for businesses, that this was a gift that you're enjoying absolutely free of charge. You can walk, trot, run, whatever buy these works and enjoy them for, for almost the whole year, right. uh, courtesy of these wonderful individuals and businesses. And, and if somebody were to want to donate to that, how, how would they go about doing that? They could contact the Arts Council, and they, if, they, if, they, if you can remember, theartscouncil.com, T-H-E-A-R-T-S, C-O-U-N-C-I-L dot com, as if there were no other Arts Council yeah. in the world, which there are, of course, but theartscouncil.com. All of the donor information, uh, uh, information about work in progress as, as it exists now, but the opportunity to uh, help support this program is right there on the top page. So. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'll have to go check that out. Thank you. Uh, before we get too far into our program, let's take a look at the map that we have that shows where these pieces are located. Thank you, Craig. So, this map, I know, as we, we talked, is, is where last year's art pieces are located, but I don't think it's changed too much. Is that correct? No, it, it's, it, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to start to grow this exhibit out from the core <coughs> of the downtown and so that all the pieces would be located in a manner so that you could walk between them and that you could even, by looking down, uh, whether it be Person Street or, or Gillespie Street, you could see one piece, you could see the next piece. So there's kind of a, almost like an art trail that we've created. Uh, and We've just been fortunate this year we've been able to expand that footprint out to include some of the county facilities, the historic courthouse, the new courthouse, also up to the ASOM, uh, Airborne <laughs> Special Operations Museum. So it's been really exciting to expand the footprint and to, um, again, begin to push that out into the city and county more, but kind of emanating from the downtown area. So what you were seeing were the initial 11 from the first installation. Right. And um, he won't say it, but I'm going to sing. Eric, Eric, as chair of that committee, is really, has, has, he's done the private fundraising. The Arts Council board votes to match that money. But he's done, and he was able to expand that this year from 11 to 17. Wow. So, which is really exciting. And you would be amazed at, at the Arts Center, where the Arts Council offices are, we often have people come in, grab a map, and they say they're either going to eat lunch and then walk it off by doing the trail, <laughs> or they're going to walk it off, do it, walk doing the trail, and then reward themselves with lunch. So uh, we have a lot of people stopping in for maps so they can walk around and enjoy that work. Well, that's great. And you mentioned the maps. I was going to say the uh, I know the website has the map on it. We just saw the most recent one, yeah. uh, but also if you wanted to, to be able to come into the Arts Council and get a map. 
simply come in there. You sure can. And then you've got a map of where to go. Sure and then you also mentioned about going to lunch. It is neat, too, to see that this is what brings people downtown uh, and, and, and keeps people downtown. And so when you're coming down to look at these pieces, you're shopping there, uh, you're, you're eating lunch there, you're doing other things, which really adds, I think, to the vibrancy of our downtown area. There's no question, at the Art Center, we have citizens who are loving it. Who are, who are coming in and saying, I love that. And I meant, well, I'm sorry you guys took this one out, but I love the one over in this corner. And they're very engaged with it. But what's really exciting is that we have visitors who are new to our community and they drive in and, and they'll stop and say, this is such an exciting thing to see this on all these street corners and what it says for our community. Because it says we love creativity, we love innovation, we are a part of the energy of this. And so it, it's been a wonderful asset. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I enjoy looking at it when I walk downtown, which is, is quite frequently. I get That's to great. see all these pieces out there. Eric or, or Deborah, uh, how do you choose the pieces that come out there? That's always a challenging pro process. I think this year we had 70 submissions that we had to go through. And so I think one of the things that the, uh, and it actually kind of goes through about three levels of committees looking at the work, but we really try to find the pieces that are, we think are going to engage the public the most, uh, that represent artistic quality. Uh, and that are appropriate for like a location. If there, there are a few pieces that we found that, you know, it just, it, they fit perfectly. I, I think last year we had a piece with a, a face that was looking up and, and we positioned it in a place where it could either be looking, depending on how you looked at it, it could be looking at the American flag, the city flag of Fayetteville, or it could be looking at Hay Street Methodist Church. And it, the artist, it was was so so impressed by the location. I think he let us actually hang on to it for a month or two longer because yeah. he just felt it was it was the perfect location for his work. So we try to look at those from those kind of criteria. But I think the most important thing is to find a, a diversity of pieces that you know there's something in something in the exhibit for everybody. Uh, we, we, we realize that everyone's not going to like every piece, but we want to make sure that in the kind of collection, there's something that, that people will relate to and, and enjoy. And it's a blind process through that three layer, mm -hmm. that those three tiers, so that the um, panels do not know who the artists are. It's simply looking at location and at the merit of the work, and okay. that's great. And this, but this year, in our second year, what we wanted to do is we actually had a forum uh, that we invited uh, local artists and was at, and, and held at the Arts Council to actually bring in professionals to help educate local artists about how can you get involved in this type of program because we're not the only community that, that it does different types of exhibits or has these 11 months or 12 months. So it was really great that we were able to kind of begin to partner some of our local artists with people that are involved in these types of programs and then how do you get involved and you know there's you know there's obviously technical things about the durability and size of the work but just you know how do you begin to promote what our local artists are doing and how do they get involved because and we're really excited that this year I think we have two pieces that are actually local and you know that's opening the doors for them to participate in other communities not only in North Carolina but you know across the southeast sure it's very exciting well let's take a look at a couple of the pieces sure. that we've got out there if we could uh, roll that video please That piece is at the corner of Hay Street and Ray, and it, it's really a, a wonderful combination of uh, kind of industrial beams, but then there's these uh, hand-sculpted uh, face castings that are embedded in concrete, and really uh, interesting. We have uh, this artist that has does these really great creative animals. Last year we had a giraffe and a horse. This year we've got a, a unicorn, and um, I think, did, did he do the, the goats, do you recall? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's your staircase, yep. which is, um, that's what one of our local artists, and mm -hmm. it fits. That little triangle there where the, where the flags are, that's a, it's a narrow space, so you have to look for a work that will, will just be right there, and, and they did a great job finding that. This piece, it was, it's called Flights, and <clears throat> I have to admit, I, I didn't really quite get it until they installed it, and, then I, and it's so appropriate, I think, for our community, because once I saw it, it's like, you know, I recognized instantly that those are, you know, kind of like jets, and, and looks like military craft in flight. 
So you were seeing there um, our operations director, Bob Penson, who works directly with the artists, and the City of Fayetteville Parks and Rec Department is just stunning. They have been they were a huge part of making this program work, and they all work together with the artist to make these installations happen. So the, goat, the goat on the pole, I mean, it's probably, I think you might call it one of the more whimsical pieces, mm -hmm. but it's really based on the artist took a trip to Morocco where these there are these Moroccan goats that kind of perch on cliffs, and they're actually the, they, they, go after these uh, nuts that they're actually on the sidewalk below the piece. Yeah. And mm -hmm. these dogs uh, that were just shown, they're, they're located in front of a cafe where there's a lot of people and, and there's a lot of patrons interact with them. They take uh, selfies with all the pictures. This, this house portal, you can actually take a picture through that portal of the market house. And we, again, it was one of those things we thought that was a kind of a cool combination. Uh, this peak between trees, we thought it was a good match with the uh, former bank building there. It's kind of Fayetteville's tallest building. It kind of you're kind of peeking between these this sculpture, but also uh, the buildings in the downtown area. This this wave piece, I think w the committee thought it was a uh, an interesting just position against a kind of the historic uh, courthouse to have that as a piece that would really kind of stand out in front of it. Yeah. And these will be out there for how much longer? They'll be there through uh, through September. Yeah. And then if we got plans for the next round to come in already, is that yes. something you're working on? Uh, we uh, will be starting that process in earnest, but I will say that <coughs> we've already had our first donor uh, come to us and say, sign me up for next year. And at any point, uh, anybody can contact the Arts Council or, or myself, and we'd be happy to put you on the list. We do uh, allow donors to, once the committee has selected the pieces that are appropriate and, and good representations, we actually do let the sponsors select which pieces they uh, want to have their names on and which ones they want to pair with. So I would say if you want to have first choice, just, um, just let me know and I'll put you on the list. But there's already people in line, which is exciting. Um, it's one of these wonderful things, public art. The response has been overwhelmingly positive, and we did a survey at the end of our last exhibit and had hundreds of responses. And overwhelmingly, people wanted more and uh, and really responded well to the pieces that we had, and, and it's really exciting for moving forward in the future. So may I share with you, connected to that survey, um, two works have <laughs> already been private donors from this community who went, have enjoyed the work, they don't want them to leave. So they have donated the funds to the Arts Council to actually purchase two of the work. One of them was from the original Works in Progress uh, program. That's the Tree of Good and Evil that's right behind the Arts Center. Sure, no, I um, love that one. So we have received yeah. funds donated specifically so that uh, citizens of Fayetteville, Cumberland County can enjoy that for a long time to come. Um, we have another donor who has uh, donated from this year's work. That's the uh, dancer that's over, as we call it, the um, the art playground. Kind of the you know? art art park. There's art uh, park. numerous groups that are trying to where they installed a playground recently, make that kind of a creative space. There's yeah. chalk art walls. There's uh, there's some other projects in the works for that area to kind of create a creative arts playground in that area. Which is great. So those two works have have the funds mm -hmm. for those works have been donated so that we can keep them. So they're staying. They're yeah. staying. And as a result of the survey that Eric was talking about, when we asked, what of these works do you love and what would you love to keep in this community? The, the top choice, overwhelmingly, though people loved all of them, right. um, was Natural Embrace. And that is the, the one that looks like a, a large Venus flytrap down close to the courthouse. They just love that work. Um, so, and that is, a, that is a big work. It is a significant and substantial work. So the Arts Council Board, Eric is on our board, and David Phillips, who is the uh, president of our Board of Trustees, have um, decided that they would like to help the community to keep that work in, in the community. And so they will match donations for the purchase of natural embrace to stay here. Well, that's fantastic. It is really wonderful. Wow. We're very excited about it. So that. again, go into the Arts Council page, and there will be instructions there on how to donate. And how to do people that. People will choose to help. And if you donate, here, all donations will be certainly celebrated and feted. If you do donate at a certain level, your name will go on the plaque that says that's there because 
the work is now ours. Sure. And it will be there for a long, long time. And these things are not easy to install. I remember seeing Bob <laughs> Pinson down there on the ground with a wrench putting that one in. And so exactly very right. careful choice of where to put them, how to put them. Uh, how long does it take to install the average piece? Do you know? Sure, yeah, I'm sure it varies. It, I think it takes a couple of hours, but you know, that's where the city of Fayetteville and, and um, Michael Gibson and his department has been so wonderful to help and assist in, in installing those. But uh, some of them can take a, a couple of hours just in terms of getting it into position and uh, some of the, the center of gravity is actually, I mean, it just doesn't sit down on the ground. You have to kind of hold it up. But it, uh, yeah. it's really exciting because the artists come into town, they participate, uh, they kind of give some of the background stories, which can be found on the Arts Council's webpage. Um, they each give a little kind of perspective about what inspired the piece and what, uh, you know, what the artist, what their vision was. And it's just mm -hmm. really nice to have that opportunity and again, they have been very supportive of and excited about where we've been locating these. And it's it's um, exciting for them to see their works, you know, get out in the public. And and to Deborah's point, there has been a lot of interest. Any of the pieces I'll put on my salesman's cap. Not only are they available for the donation, but they can be sponsored and and uh, funds donated so that the arts council council can purchase those, and they're ultimately gifted to the city of Fayetteville. Uh, but it w we, we have that price list, and if anybody is so inclined, <laughs> we're, we're happy to, to expand the collection of artwork. I think eventually, you know, by having these additional pieces, we begin to reach out and embrace to the, the Veterans Park, which has uh, some significant uh, public art installations, the new transportation center. It's not in yet, but it's going to have uh, some public artwork. And this exhibit will just kind of begin to tie into those. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an exciting and we've been working with a group, um, neighborhood, uh, um, people who grew up in Massey Hill or people who still live in Massey Hill, neighbors of Massey Hill. We've been working with the city to develop a work of public art that will be owned. That This one will stay in the roundabout in Massey Hill. Okay. And so that's very exciting. Um, yeah. One of the things when Eric was talking about, the, and, and you had asked about the installation, the artists are there and the artists position it exact because they're looking at the context and they're angling it the way they need to. And they love it when citizens and visitors stop and chat with them. Right. Well, what were you thinking when you did that? That's yeah. cool. And they just love that engagement. So sometimes what might have been a two-hour installation <laughs> might be longer sure. yeah. because it, it just it initiates such great conversation. Yeah. Well, I remember watching the video of the, the one about the Moroccan goats, which what's it called again? It's um, uh, for no for apparent no reason. Apparent reason. reason. Yeah. So yeah. you can go on there and look at that video and have him talk about how that happened and, and watch him help position that as well. But yeah. it's, that's pretty neat. Now, what happens, so once these things are done, and if, if the city doesn't commission it and keep it longer, where do these art pieces go back to? Do you know? The, the artist. They belong to the artist. These works are leased for the 11-month time that they are here. Um, so the artist comes and retrieves them and moves them to another installation or, you know, has them uh, available for sale in their own area, whatever, but yeah. So if somebody wanted one of these for their backyard, they could feasibly do that? Mm -hmm. Without question, yeah. yes. And do they contact you for that or do they have to contact the artist directly? They contact the Arts Council directly contact and we Council. will connect them with the artist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's great, yeah. Um, Public art, as we look at the public art master plan that um, our board uh, invested in you bringing in a consultant to develop a planning process so that we are, are working across the city of Fayetteville and our intention is to go across Cumberland County, but to do it in a very effective way, um, a, a, a way that ensures that artists and citizens Protect, are protected, you know, you want to be sure that a work of art is appropriate for that location, right. um, what the maintenance is going to be on it. So the plan itself is a really important document. We've uh, in, included a lot of people from this community in the development of the plan, and we uh, are hoping that we will have the opportunity to um, create that as policy in our city. Okay. And, and speaking of the, the policy aspect, and you mentioned that most of these things are concentrated downtown now, and you mentioned Cumberland County. What other places would you look to put art pieces across the county or across the city? Any ideas on where that those pieces might go? Well, I think uh, the example I'm, I'm 
we get approached all the time. People say, well, you know, the, there's, there, I think there's some dogwood blossoms or something in, on an over stainless steel over an overpass and carry. I think as you go up Highway 64, and they're like, Eric, you know, why can't we have those? Or, mm -hmm. or people think about the oak tree on the side of the convention center in Raleigh. Uh, uh, that those are public art pieces, and they were created by the fact that those communities have public art ordinances. And so this ordinance would uh, would begin to enable that. And one of the things is is it requests that when you're building a project, a public project, that a portion of those funds, instead of let's say spending it on bricks to build a big brick wall, that you know maybe you commission a an artist to paint a mural or to you know do the the oak tree shimmer shimmer wall that you see in Raleigh. You know that, that piece probably did not cost um, a whole lot more than if that wall had been brick or concrete or glass. Instead, it, but it, they instead they just engaged an artist to come up with that, and it appears on every postcard, every newscast, every you know it, it's synonymous with the image of Raleigh. And we want to uh, our ordinance would hopefully do the same thing for Fayetteville. And so the intent is it would be with any public building. Uh, park or, or that we can begin to start incorporating um, artwork uh, into those improvements. Yeah. Functional art, if you think bike racks, benches, um, and particularly the highway development that we have right now that, that Eric was mentioning. When you have an overpass, anyone who's outside in the southwest, sometimes you'll drive under an overpass and you'll see built into the sides rather than just concrete or whatever there are desert animals swimming right. in the concrete and it's just an engaging thing we have a lot of highway development happening in our community right now and will be over the next right. there are lots of opportunities where it could it where it probably would be just plain concrete it has the opportunity to be something engaging right yeah. yeah, 295 with the outer loop. I mean, there are yeah. huge possibilities out there with all the, yeah. all the construction going yeah. on there. And Eric, you mentioned the mural. Uh, the one out here at Fayetteville State University, is that part of the Arts Council's endeavors? It was originally funded through a grant from the Arts Council many years ago. And um, Ms. Dorothy Fielder, the Moja Group, different people from the community have gone on and, and refreshed it, updated it, and they have maintained that mural all these years, wow. but it was initiated with a grant from the Arts Council. That's good to know. I, mean, yeah. I noticed that every time I come in here, yeah. and that's really an iconic piece that it sticks out as you're coming in the entrance of the university, and you and you see that there, and it's really a part of the community and, and reflects the area around it, and uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure to look at something like that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you all would like to share about the, the work in progress concept or, or anything else with our viewers? Well, I think, you know, we've talked about the artistic standpoint of it and the creativity and, and all, but I, I think at the end of the day, for me, what both the master plan and the public art exhibit is it really says at Fayetteville that we're in it because as a community, it, it puts out there that, you know, we are investing, you know, not just in uh, infrastructure and, and, and obviously taking care of the day-to-day the -day needs, but we are doing things that are... Um, moving our community forward and as companies it used to be a few years ago when we debated about de developing downtown everyone said you know we, we we need to be able to take you know future companies or people that are thinking about relocating downtown and we couldn't but well, we've we've kind of checked that off of our box I think downtown is the first place we take people now and I see public art as being the same thing as, as we take Perspective residents, perspective businesses, they're going to be looking for these things like public art and they're going to be looking for these quality, quality of life investments. And this is the next step. So while we certainly love art and, and, and it's going to help facilitate the creativity and, and arts economy, at the end of the day, we're also looking at the big picture and we want to make sure that Fayetteville's in the game. And I think public art and investments in art and culture are the next step. And it's an important step for our community to take. Absolutely. Ditto. Okay. Well, well, with that, Eric and Deborah, thank you very much for joining us today on City Conversation. Very happy. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity for you to be here, and we look forward to what's coming next. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy your episode. Mm -hmm.